way And I'm right there next to you Next to you If you feel fear Know that you don't have to go through Alone Not alone Why am I here? Why did I die for you? And then live too so that you Take your own time to be assured Don't waste time worrying Don't waste time losing your head Don't give out the chance to Greetings and thank you so much today for tuning in to Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word. We have been spending some time studying through the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians. and We are in chapter 1 and we're going through verse by verse and I would attempt to make brief comments on these verses as we progress through the episode. Uh, of course, I would encourage you to personally study these verses, meditate in it, uh, let it sink in deep into your heart and make it part of your life uh, so that it goes, more, it goes beyond just hearing 
or understanding into something that you apply and walk in uh, in your daily life. So we pick up now in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15. Uh, as Paul is writing to the believers at Ephesians, he's writing from prison in, in, under house arrest in Rome, and he writes to them, and he says in verse 15, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all saints, verse 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So Paul is reminding the believers there, look, from that time you came to faith in Christ, I have, without ceasing, continued to pray for, give thanks for you, and I continue to pray for you. So imagine he's far away in Rome, uh, in prison, imprisoned, and from there he continues to pray for the believers at Ephesians. It tells us something very important. It tells us that, you know, God's people, believers, uh, in local churches need to be prayed for. So we need to pray for, and we need to pray over, and we need to give thanks for local communities of believers. So which of a local church you are part of, you pray for them. Whether it's a few moments every day, or whether it's even once a week, you make it a point to pray for the church community that you are part of, and that you can follow Paul's prayer, the same prayer that he prayed uh, in his epistles, uh, for believers. So what did Paul pray for them? Verses 17 through 20, it says, uh, this is what Paul is praying. He says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So he's saying, look, I'm praying for you that God would give you the spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation, so that you may know him. You know, all of those of us who believe, as we are born again, we are born of the Spirit, but we must grow in revelation. We must grow in our knowledge of the Lord. And that comes through the Spirit of God, through the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. So you can pray this for yourself, and you can pray this for your local church, for community believers. So God, give us, give me more, Lord, of the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I can know you. Revelation is, it simply means to have our eyes open to see what has previously been hidden, what has not been made known to us. So our eyes are open so that we can see these things. He says in verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? So he says, here's what I'm praying. I'm praying that you will grow in the knowledge of God. Secondly, I'm praying that your eyes will be enlightened so that your eyes will be open to see what? To see, that, to know the hope of your calling or the purpose to which you have been called. So that's the second thing that's important for us as believers. We must have understanding. We must receive revelation of the purpose to which we are called. God has a purpose to which he has called you and me as believers. And we need to understand that. There is a common purpose that we are all called to as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. But there is also the specific purpose that God has for each one of us, which he has called us to. And for both, we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We need the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened, to be open so that we will know, have, have knowledge of the hope to which we are called. The third thing that Paul prays for them is he prays that they will know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So he's praying and saying, God, I want, you, I want, I want these people to know the glorious wealth and inheritance that the Lord has for the saints. That means, as a believer, you're born again, and you're in the kingdom. And as Paul was enumerating in the earlier part of this chapter, various things that are components of our rich inheritance that has been granted to us, he's praying now that they would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that their eyes will be opened so that they will know the riches of this inheritance which God has for the people that he has called, his saints. So that's the third thing. We must receive revelation. We must receive understanding of what is our inheritance. We have become partakers or partners 
uh, of the inheritance that God has for the saints in light. As it says there in Acts 20 and verse 32. But now our eyes need to be opened to know what is that inheritance. Because if we don't know what that inheritance is, if we don't know what God has kept for us, we will not be able to walk in it. So there will be an inheritance available, uh, but it's going to lie dormant, unused, untapped, and we as believers will not be living in that inheritance. So it's so important for us to receive revelation, to receive an understanding of the inheritance that we have as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he prays, verses 19, verses 9 and 20, he says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So Paul is saying, this is the fourth thing I'm praying that I want you to know. I want you to know what is the greatness of God's power. He says the exceeding greatness of God's power, dunamis, the miracle working power of God, the supernatural strength and ability of God made available to us who believe, for us as believers. And he says, the power, the ability, the supernatural power that God is making available to you and me as believers, it is the same power that God exerted or God worked when he raised Jesus up from the dead. The resurrection power of God, the same resurrection power of God with which he raised Jesus up from the dead. He's saying that's the same power that God has made available to you and me as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this passage here in Ephesians 1, verses 17 to 20, is a very important passage because it tells us what we as believers must come into in terms of revelation, in terms of spiritual knowledge and spiritual understanding. There are four things we saw Paul make mention of in this passage. He says, I want you to know four things. One, I want you to know, come into the knowledge of him. That is, who is God? Who is he really? What is his true picture? What is the real nature of God? To know him. Second, he says, I want you to know the hope of his calling, the purpose or the future of what God has called you to, so that we lock into that purpose and we understand that's why we are here. That's the purpose for which he has called us. Thirdly, he says, I want you to know the riches of the inheritance that he has for his people. I want you to know what God has made available to us as his own sons and daughters, that inheritance. We need to know that. And the fourth thing he says is, I want you to know the greatness of the power of God, that the resurrection power of God that is available to you. And really, if you and I understand that God's resurrection power is actually made available to us, the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead, which no hell could, that all of hell could not restrain. You know, I'm sure that the devil and all of his demons would want it, would, would have tried their best to keep Jesus down in the grave. But the resurrection power of God was far superior than all the powers of darkness put together. And, God, and Paul is saying that is the very power of God God has made available to you and me as believers. That resurrection power is available to you to heal your body, to break up every chain, to make you whole, uh, spirit, soul, body, to work in your circumstances, to work in your situations. And Paul says, I want you to have a revelation. I want you to have an understanding of this great power that he has made available to us. And then he concludes there, in chapter 1 concludes, verses 21 to 23. Um, he says, it's the power that God used when he raised Jesus from the dead. Then he tells us something about the Lord himself. He says, that God has raised him up, made far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. I want you to notice something here. Paul is saying to us that that Jesus has been positioned now after his resurrection in a place that is far greater, far higher than every principality, power, might, and dominion. Now, that's the terminology Paul always uses to refer to the powers of darkness. The Lord has been exalted far above all of these things. All these things have been put under his feet. Every name that is named uh, is put underneath the feet of Jesus Christ 
And he says, the Lord did this. He made him head over all things to the church or for the church. That means the reason Jesus is there is for the benefit of the church. The body walks in the same authority as the head. We as the church, the body, derive our identity, derive our authority, derive our ability from Christ who is our head. So imagine if the head is above all of this, so is also the body, which is the church. The church is in such a great place. The church, the body of Christ, the community of God's people, is in a place of authority and dominion over all of these things. So not only is Christ in that place, but the church, which is his body, is also in that place. The difference is the church, part of the church, is right here in the natural realm on the earth, or while the head, who is Christ, is in the heavenly realms. He's seated on that throne. That spiritually we are there, seated with him in heavenly realms, but in the natural realm, we are walking on the earth. But that does not change our identity. That does not change our authority. Our identity and our authority is derived from the head, that is Jesus Christ. So just think about this. This is what the church has. When I say the church, I mean the, the, the whole body of believers who have been washed in the blood of Jesus, born again, and they have been saved through faith in Christ. The church has this kind of authority and dominion, and we must learn to use that here on earth. On earth, it's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that is the agent with the highest, the greatest power and authority. It's been given to us because we are connected to the head. And so Paul continues the same thought there in chapter 2 as he begins in chapter 2, verse 1 onwards. He says, And you he has made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins and trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. That is the first seven verses of Ephesians chapter 2. So what is Paul saying? He's saying, you know, before we got saved, we were living like this. We were actually influenced or under the dominion, dom uh, domination, of the spirit of disobedience that works in everyone who's not saved. And we were, by default, we were under God's wrath. We were under God's judgment because we were people who just lived according to the, the, the desires of our flesh and of our mind, just as we were driven by those things. The flesh and the mind dominated us. And that's our life. That was how we lived. And Paul says, in that life, we were dead in sin. But God, God is who is so rich in mercy. He brought us out of all of that. And what did he do? It's so amazing. It says, he raised us up together and he made us sit together with Christ in heavenly realms. God pulled us out from that, that life in darkness and the life in control of the flesh and the, and the, um, of the, flesh and the mind, a life that was controlled by the spirit of disobedience that works now in this age. He brought us out of that and he actually put us into the heavenly realms and he made us sit together at his right hand in Christ Jesus. So think about this believer. You as a person who believes in Jesus Christ, you are actually right now seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. You are seated at the highest throne that is there in this universe. There is no higher position you can rise to in the spirit than where God has placed you and me already we are seated with him at his right hand in Christ Jesus. And he says, all this he did by his grace. It was not by our works. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. But God, because he was rich, was rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, he did this. And he says he did this so that even in the age,
ages to come, he's going to talk about this. He's going to say, look, this is what I did. And I did it because of the riches of my grace and my kindness that I have for you. Uh, and all of this has been given to us in Christ Jesus. I want you to understand something that from these verses. There is a rich inheritance for you as a believer in Christ. There is this great power, exceeding great power, resurrection power of God available for you in Jesus. And you, because you're part of the church, you are in a place of great authority and dominion right now while you are here on the earth. Spiritually, you are connected to him. You derive your authority and dominion from Christ who is the head. You're seated with him in heavenly places. And you can walk in this in your everyday life as you exercise your faith in God. Believe God for these things. We invite you to visit our church website, apcwo.org, where we have several free resources like MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us. Before we close, I would like to take some time to pray. If there's anyone watching this program and you've never been born again, then all that I'm saying would not make sense to you. It would not apply to you. Only when you are born again and you're brought into the kingdom of God and you have become one with Jesus, with all these things become relevant and true for your life. How do you become born again? Well, you need to receive Jesus Christ into your life. Because the Bible says that whoever receives Jesus, to them he gives the power to become children of God. So if you've never received Christ into your life, I want to help you do that on this program. After I pray with you, I will also pray for people who need healing, who need deliverance. You may need healing in your body or in your emotions. You may need deliverance from unclean spirits and demons that are tormenting you. I will pray a short prayer, but in those few moments, I believe, that the power of God will touch your life right where you are. So I want you to expect a healing, a miracle, whatever you need in your life. Let's pray together. If, you've wanna, if you have never been born again, you want to, I ask you please to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I want to be born again. I want to be born into your kingdom. I want the life you give me. I receive you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me to live for you and you alone the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. And Father, I right now pray for anyone watching God who might be sick, suffering in their body or their mind, or might be troubled in any way by evil spirits and demons. Father, right now, by the authority of the name of Jesus, I speak over them. I speak into their lives. I command every sickness and disease to go. I break the hold of every sickness and disease over your body and your mind. I rebuke every unclean spirit to come out of your life, every spirit of infirmity to come out, every spirit tormenting your mind to go. And I command wholeness to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus, receive your healing, be made whole. And God, I thank you for your miracle. Thank you for the things you do for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, remember, live life to Jesus' way. Admissions are now open at the APC Bible College for the two-year full-time course in English starting July 2017. For more information, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. 
Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India.